Edward Riddler, ESPN. Uh, first off, congratulations on the win, guys. Um, for everyone, um, it's been since 2016 since y'all won the ACC tournament title. Um, can you describe your level of hunger to bring that trophy back to Chapel Hill with you? You guys. Um, it would mean a lot to this program just because we haven't won in a, lot of, uh, a couple of years, but um, it just shows how much of a, a team we are and uh, how resilient we are. And um, we set goals at the beginning of this year, and for us to be one more game away means a lot, but the job's not finished. Um, you just got to take it one game at a time. And i um, super proud of this group and the way we battled tonight because uh, Pittsburgh is a really good team. They play tough on both ends, uh, both ends of the floor. So for us to come out with a win, um, that's Carolina basketball right there. Four on the end. Rod Baxley, Fayetteville Observer for RJ and Armando. I, I noticed you guys made a beeline for each other when the buzzer sounded. What was that conversation before y'all left the court? Just one of those things, us just being excited and getting to the championship. I mean, like RJ said, job isn't finished, but to go out there and win that game in that fashion, and I mean, I was just super excited. RJ, he's been our closer all year, and he hit some huge shots, so I was really just embracing him and telling him thank you. Second to the last row in the back. Tiger Munn, DC News Now. Pitt had the lead going into the half. The second half was a different story, and you guys just looked like a completely different team. What changed in that locker room? Our defense. I mean, Coach Davis uh, says, you know, someone's going to have to take the challenge, and I think – uh, Harrison did a terrific job tonight uh, guarding Henson. We know how dangerous he is from three and holding him to two field goals. I mean, I think <laughs> Harrison's been phenomenal all year, but for him to go out there and just kind of just make it uh, difficult for Henson, that was terrific. And then Seth, uh, his impact on the on ball against Carrington, um, super aggressive, was, was huge for us. So uh, Coach Davis' main, main message was to take the challenge on the defensive end. Um, offense is always going to be fine, but it's the defense that's going to win those games. And when it got down to it, we, we got stops and we executed on the offensive end. Third row on the end. Adam Gatkin with Orange Fizz. Coach, there's a chance that Pittsburgh doesn't make the tournament. They're pretty much right on the edge of the bubble right now. How do you feel about that and just kind of the overall state of the ACC on the bubble? Uh, just personally, I just that just doesn't make sense at all. I just, I don't care what metric, whatever you look at, there's no way that you can look at this game and look at Pitt and not say it's definitively an NCAA tournament team and not just an NCAA tournament team, a team that could go far in the tournament. Um, extremely well coached. Coach Capel does a fantastic job. The players that they have on there, not only are they big time college players, that. They got future NBA players over there. They play together as a team. Um, they gave us everything that, um, you know, tonight. And uh, for us to come away with the win, we're very fortunate. Fourth row on the end. Josh Graham, WSJS, RJ and Armando. Given what you guys went through last year and obviously the experience you had in 22, what would it mean tomorrow night if you get the opportunity to cut down the nets again? It would be huge because we've been through so much and we just worked so hard this year. Coaches, players, we've all been locked in and we've been a family. And I mean, it's just been a fun ride. So to go out with a championship would be huge. And that's been one of our biggest goals this year. Second round in front. David Glenn from the North Carolina Sports Network for Harrison and Coach. Harrison, Jameer Watkins had 30 plus against FSU. You guys had, put him in a bad shooting night. Blake Henson's one of the leading scorers in the league. This is twice this year that you really shut him down. Just give us your mindset going into a game like this where your offensive numbers are smaller than usual, but you obviously help the team win. And Coach, could you tell me what you saw from Harrison in those kind of situations against those players? You know, for us, it's, it's team defense. Um, we're the number one defense in the ACC, and you know, we have a lot, of, a lot of good players. We play kind of smaller, so our guards, they get into the ball pretty well. And you know, for me, it was easier to kind of stay on Blake Henson knowing that our guards are doing their job on the ball. Armando's doing his job on the ball screens and, you know, making it difficult for everybody else. And, you know, at the end of the day, Coach, he challenges us um, every single day to play defense and take our matchups one-on-one. -on -one. And today, I feel like I did. Yeah, Harrison did um, just a job defensively that he did on Henson. But it's not just, you know, specifically to tonight. Um, Harrison has been that guy for us on our defensive end all season. His size, his athleticism gives us versatility on the defensive end to be able to put them in a number of different situations, um, along with Armando, the two best rebounders in the ACC. And so 
Um, we always talk about um, making impact plays, and there's a number of ways that you can make, make impact plays to give our team a, an opportunity and a chance to win. And I can go down the line with everybody that played, what they did impactfully for us to be able to pull out a win tonight. You want it from? Uh, Michael Coe, WCHL, Chapelboro.com. This one's for Armando and Coach Davis. Pitt comes back to tie it at 62-62 with about four minutes left. Immediately next possession for you guys. It's The ball gets to RJ and he knocks down a three. Just what, what does that say about RJ stepping up to that moment? And what does that say about his toughness and his leadership? Yeah, like I said, all year RJ's been our closer and moments like that, I mean, it's a huge luxury to know you can put the ball in our guard's hands and he'll either make the shot or make the right play. And I mean, I think it just shows all the hard work that he's put in to be able to make a huge shot like that when we need it most on the biggest stage. Yeah, you know, RJ made a great move, but it was a terrific, terrific screen by Armando that got RJ open and, you know, Specifically in the second half, we put the ball in the hands of RJ and Armando, and if they didn't score, uh, just their passing and decision making was just fantastic. And then after RJ hit that three, he looked over. I don't know if you were looking over at me or yeah, was. your parents, or <laughs> I don't know if he was looking over at me for approval. I was like, yeah, I like that. That's nice. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> and so it was great, but. It's not just tonight. RJ and Armando and Harrison, they have they've shown up the entire season. Last row on the end. Uh, Shane Holcomb, uh, Newhouse Sports Media Center. Uh, Armando, first of all, congratulations on now holding the uh, all-time ACC record for most starts um, in a career. You have 164 starts, which is pretty awesome. Um, also, your 16th double-double of the, of the season tonight. How much pride do you take in that physical nature inside the post, especially going up against a team like Pittsburgh that brings a lot of that energy? And because sometimes, you know, that doesn't show up pretty on the stat sheet, but you provide a lot of that energy for this team. Pitt has always been a physical team. And going into this game, we knew we had to set the tone in the trenches. And that's one of the main things that me and Harry talked about going into this game. We wanted to rebound the ball specifically on the offensive end and try to create second chance opportunities, but also get their big man in foul trouble because we knew if we can get Federico in foul trouble and also uh, Diaz, that we were having an advantage. So I think we did a great job, and I think that allowed us to have a lot of success. All right. Our last question in the back. Uh, Zach Peerless, CBS Sports. For Harrison, um, you're a guy who had played a lot of basketball, and now you've joined a team that has played a ton of basketball, especially the two guys next to you. How in specific do you feel kind of that experience, especially in those late moments, especially along to, alongside these two guys? You know, it's, it's, it makes the game so much easier knowing that I got two veterans right here you can just give the ball to and you know, they make a play. I mean, whether it's a play for themselves or, you know, RJ hitting his little three or Armando flexing and hitting the dunk. I mean, just having two players like that on my team, you know, it makes it a lot more easier for me to just, you know, trust them to do their job and I do my job. Okay, we're going to take one last question here in the front. Thank you. Uh, Adam Smith with Inside Carolina. Uh, it, I'm pretty sure it was the, the last 18 points were scored by Armando and RJ, if we've got that right. And Mondo, it looked like as the time was, was ticking down at the end, you went over to RJ in the corner and you guys were sharing a moment. I mean, what, what were you saying there? You were pretty fired up, it looked like. Just super excited to get a chance to play in the championship. And it was a tough game. And I mean, it got closed down in the stretch. And I think me and RJ just really wanted to make plays to so we can win the game and we were just excited defensively too because we shut them down in the end and we always practice um, those situations with three minutes left or a minute and a half left on what to do and I think we really just apply what we practice into the game.